All right, welcome everybody. Mike Hamilton here. Welcome back to one of our Madcap Software webinars I will be hosting today. And with us, rather than a Madcap staff member, today we're bringing in an industry expert who will share their knowledge with us. We will have Mr. Joe Gelb with us. Now, a bit of background. Mr. Gelb has over 20 years of experience helping enterprises implement, maintain, and capitalize on structured content. As co-founder and president of Zoomin, he has spearheaded the development of advanced technology solutions for dynamic content delivery. Prior to founding Zoomin and Suite Solutions, Joe designed and implemented documentation solutions for aerospace, defense, manufacturing, and high-tech companies. Joe holds a degree in mechanical engineering, and it's from Stevens Institute of Technology. Wow. I'm looking forward to this one. <laughs> now, before I turn the microphone over, we do always have just a little bit of housekeeping that we want to go over. So the presentation that Mr. Gelb is going to share is on modernizing your content strategy, omnisource, omnichannel, and omnipresent. But before we get started, since everybody always wants to ask, the webinar will be recorded just by signing up. You are now on the list. You will receive an email once everything has been posted. So yes, that will be recorded. You will have access to that recording. And to protect everybody's privacy, all of your microphones are on mute. However, if you would like to ask questions at any time during the presentation, there is a dedicated question panel. So feel free to use that. But with that, I will turn the microphone over to Mr. Gelb. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mike. I have to say there's a first time for everything. And I think this is the first time ever that I've been introduced to any webinar or anything as a Mr. Gelb. So <laughs> I guess I should thank you for that. <laughs> I'm not sure or not, but uh, but thanks very much for the introduction and very much looking forward to, to this discussion. And I hope that you find it useful for, uh, for everyone there in the audience and looking forward to hearing any comments or questions you might have. We're getting started. A, a little a couple words about about Zoomin, the company that um, that I'm working with, and uh, helped to co-found. Zoomin is is a content orchestration platform, which we'll talk more about what that is. And the idea is of unifying and aggregating technical content in order to present it anywhere where your customers are going to need that. And uh, we'll talk about what that means, and how that works into this idea of omni-source, omni-channel, and, and omnipresence. Some of the companies that, that work with us, and some of them, some of you might be in the audience, um, as are as on this uh, on the sheet as well. Most of our customers are are like you. They're um, writing, managing uh, technical documentation, technical content, learning content, support content, and they also have similar challenges of being able to efficiently get that content created, updated, published, and really get it inside in front of the customers and the and the internal stakeholders that really need to get access to that content. So that's really um, where we are, and this is really what we were founded in order to be able to support. So let's dive in to talk about omnisource and omnichannel. So, you know, in the good old days, um, you know, we talked about this idea of single source, single source publishing, you know, you take one source of content and you publish it into multi, multiple outputs. Back then we had, you know, things like PDF and HTML, that was the, those were the, the multiple sources we were going to or the multiple uh, formats we're going to, but these days we talk more about omnisource um, and omnichannel. Now, in the past, when we talked about single sourcing, it was very much about you know which tools can we use um, in order to to implement that single sourcing to make it our lives more easy, allowing us to get you know more efficiency around reuse and publishing things like this and, and translation. But these days, the game has has changed, I think, quite a bit. Um, I think that the bottom line around efficiencies is and uh, productivity is is still there, but I think it's it's much more focused and and I guess much more explicit these days. So we're gonna talk about this idea of going from single source to omni-source 
and going from uh, multiple multiple formats to omni-channel and see how that, that relates to a modernization of the content platforms. Now, click on this button again. Now, these days, it's not, again, it's just not, it's not just about how we're building our tools set in order to be able to publish properly, but the way we build our content ecosystem really is gonna impact our content ROI, right? ROI, we've all heard that term, return on investment. When we talk about return on investment for content, that really means the ability to identify, measure, and improve how your content, your documentation, and other different types of technical content, how that's supporting business goals, okay? It's not just about like, can I get a good PDF that looks good? That's still important. Can I, can I get a good HTML rendition that looks good? And you know, it's not even about, can I get my content to be GPT, GPT enabled, which is also important these days, but that's also not the bottom line. The bottom line really is making sure that our content is is going to show that content, you know, return on investment. So that's what we're going to kind of frame the question around of how we build more um, effectivity regarding content ROI. Now, why is this important? Now, some of these it might be a rhetorical question, like, of course, it's important, but but reality of today is that the market conditions really are forcing every company to be even more efficient than they were before. You know, whereas a lot of our of of you and your organizations had a budget, and it was pretty you know, pretty stable and, and pretty protected. Um, these days, it's not the case. So every company is being forced to become more efficient. Any investment that your company makes, whether it be in R&D or in new products or in content, needs to be able to say, to prove that you can save costs and generate value. Okay. Now, technical content, uh, good news for us, really, is, is that, that the content that you're creating and managing and producing is really a key enabler for reducing costs for reducing churn risk and generating customer value. Now these sometimes be, you know, may sound like buzzwords and we're gonna dive into, into each of these terms and see how they, um, how we can turn buzzwords into, into real concepts that we can, we can dig into and actually uh, quantify. Okay, so let's dive in. Now, again, before we used to talk about single source publishing, you know, a lot of you are, are using Flare, Madcap Flare, some of you might be using Data and the, and the Ixosoft products, but basically we're talking about you know most of us we're using, you know maybe one or one or two different types of formats. But these days it's a much more complicated ecosystem. Let's kind of dig into that. Now, what you're seeing here is a is kind of a a, a grid trying to map out content types that we have in our organization, the flow of that content, and the touch point. And we're going to try to map out uh, these three three aspects and how that relates to a content strategy, strategy and how we can go to, to, sing, to an, an omni-source and omni-channel framework. Now, in typical organizations that, that, um, that I'm familiar with and probably a lot of you are familiar with also, we don't just have technical documentation or, right, or manuals or guides. We also have maybe API documentation, um, docs as code. Maybe a lot of you are working with that. We also have product information like content that the product managers are creating, um, marketing people are creating, Engineers are creating, different SMEs are creating. We also have knowledge articles. Knowledge articles are typically created by the support organization. That's also technical content. Um, we also have community discussions. These are more like crowdsourced type of, of content that's being created out there in the community. We also have learning and training. Again, we have um, organizations inside of our company that are just going and creating that learning and training content for enablement, right? So we have, it's, you know, it's not just about technical documentation. Um, it's about a lot of different types of content in, in the organization. And whereas in the past, we were able to kind of focus on our type of documentation, these days there's a lot more interplay between all these different types of content. And from the customer's point of view, often they really don't care. They don't really care about where their answers or the technical information is coming from. They just really care about getting the answer they need um, right away, whether it's from an enablement point of view or from a support point of view. So we have different types of content. Now, Typically for technical documentation, we have our authoring tools. We have some kind of a CMS or C CMS, um, which is which is managing that content. We have uh, publishing, and that content typically gets its way out to either a .com site or to a documentation portal. Sometimes we have to have a special developers portal for that content or partners portal, right? So we have different types of stakeholders needing different segmentation or or aspects of that content. Okay, and more and more again the API documentation. We're seeing this idea of docs as code that's typically stored in some kind of virtual control system that gets published out and, and will make its way out to some kind of a touch point or, or website typically. 
Okay. I presume if I was in a, if we, you were all a, a live audience, I can kind of uh, interact with you a little bit more than this platform. I would be asking you how many of you this resonates to, and I presume a lot of your hands would be going up. So we also have other product information, like I mentioned, the engineers, product managers, they're creating content. We have knowledge management tools that are being used by the support organizations. And that content typically gets out to a support portal or some kind of CRM for case management. Um, sometimes they're getting out to chatbots, very like these FAQs are smaller chunks of knowledge content, getting out to chatbots. And we have also community platforms, also the content um, often makes its way there. If you notice, by the way, we have that, that touch point there called in product. That's the you know in product help or or you know, context sensitive help. Um, often these days, because of the technology and because of our SaaS products, very often that con that becomes a almost like a silo where content is not able to get to. And we'll talk about that later also. So we also have the community discussions and we have learning content, right? And they also have their tools. Okay, and they make their way out to a community and to a university. So a lot of you probably understand this. Now, if we, you know, this is this ecosystem is, you know pretty complex. If you think about it, there's a lot of different types of content out there to be thinking about from a strategy point of view. So there's a lot of different types of content. There's a lot of different touch points of where this content is eventually getting out to, to the face of your customer or to the face of your your partners and individual stakeholders, right? And if it's not, if it's not bad enough, then each of these boxes has a plethora of different types of tools, right? A lot of you are using Madcap Flare or, or Dita. Um, but maybe you're using some other you know, tool, maybe some legacy content as well. You're storing that content in the CCMS and that's making its way out. Uh, but the, the API content is using also their own tools, Markdown, um, Swagger, Doxygen, RST, and there's probably more than a dozen other different types of, of varieties there that can't fit in that little box. And that's going to different version control systems. We also have different authoring tools for the product information. Very often um, engineers and SMEs are using Google Docs or uh, Confluence or, or Word, uh, knowledge articles, they have their own knowledge management systems and, you know, like uh, Salesforce, Zendesk, ServiceNow, things like this, okay? And again, there's the, on the, on the touch point side, it also becomes complicated because there's different systems in the, in the different platforms in the company that need to be able to receive this content. Um, and very often as our companies grow by acquisition, there's more than one icon or logo that are represented in that touch point. And then we have community and we have LMS as well. So a lot of these different logos may be, may be familiar to you. So if we stop and think about it and say, okay, this, this is the reality of a modern, you know, let's say mo mostly B2B content ecosystem. Okay, also B2C, but very often B2B complex organizations with complex products typically have this type of ecosystem. Okay, and it's, it's not so simple. It's not single source, it's omni-source. We have lots of different sources as not just one channel, it's multiple channels that this content is going to. So we look to see like, okay, well, it's complex. So what's the problem? So what, where's the inefficiencies here? You know, if we talked earlier about getting more value from our content and value from our, our ecosystem. So where are the inefficiencies here? Well, from a, a pure IT point of view, well, our IT organizations need to, to, um, to be able to manage all these different types of tools. Now, a lot of these tools on the left on the left side, and we don't want to get rid of them. I mean, a lot of these formats and tools they have, they're very useful, uh, and we wouldn't want necessarily to to change the way people are creating content, authoring content. That makes a lot of sense to keep to keep that. I'll, I'll change from complexity to diversity, right? Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to keep that diversity on the left side. The, really, the problem comes on the right side, where the content is being is being pushed out to multiple places. Now, from an internal point of view, it's it's a big becomes a problem, but also from really from a customer point of view is a big problem also because customers just don't know where to find where to find content. So they have a, a question, you know, very often customers, you know, sometimes they want to go ahead and, and download a manual, but more often they have a question that they need to get answered. I have a problem that they need to get off, they, they need to get resolved. So finding the right place to get an answer is becoming more and more difficult. And they, again, they don't really care whether that content is in a topic of that you created in Flare, or whether it's, you know, in a Markdown file that one of the product managers created, or whether the support people created, you really, um, they really just want, they want to get answers to the question. So, this, this um, omni-channel reality, is, you know, is becoming a an inefficiency. Another one, like we mentioned before, is in product, right? A lot of you were used to, you know, open up Flare, create a chum file, upload that to your product, and it's all great, right? 
fact, there's a win help, we have win help, now we have, we have chum, we have other types of help. But now with SAS, it's not so easy for a lot of us to get to get content into that help. And also we're using tools like Pendo and WalkMe, which are providing more of it, like walkthroughs, enablement tools. And so that becomes its own island, which we really never had before. So in a sense, we would take many steps forward and like, you know, many steps back as well. So that's a problem as well. That's an inefficiency. Another inefficiency is up on the top right there, meaning um, often our content is just not available to the public, right? We have content that's available maybe only for customers, only for partners, only for internal service people. And then some of the content, maybe even the majority of it would be uh, would be open to the public, but not but not all of it. So often we're forced to have multiple portals or more to multiple sites to have that content you know, delivered. And that also becomes um, a big inefficiency for our organizations. And again, this becomes uh, becomes inefficiency for IT to be able to um, to be able to handle that. Uh, these days we're talking about GPT, um, AI. It also becomes a big challenge for AI. Uh, how do you implement the language model and how do you implement GPT when there's so many different sources of content and so many different channels, you know, it becomes also much more difficult to handle that as well. So there's a lot of room here for improvement, a lot of room where, where we can get much more bang for a buck or really much more ROI in our content. And also, frankly, it's just to make you look much better, making making your content more updated or more, you know, more, uh, you know, give her a lower time to value, meaning getting the content out there in front of customers more quickly, and just making it much more easy for customers to get get answers to that. So, what we're we've been uh, implementing um, more and more is a construct called content orchestration. Okay, the idea of content orchestration is that if you're able to put a a layer in between the left side where we're creating and managing content and the right side where we're pushing content to customers, right? And where customers are consuming our content, then, then it makes things a lot more efficient. So first of all, we're able to, um, to channel and pro provide, like a, a rules-based API-based layer in the middle, which allows us to build and gives us much more flexibility on the right side to deliver content. Also allows us to, to take multiple portals, like you know, for doc for developers and public and partners, et cetera, and combine them into one because we can have a, a common a taxonomy and a common entitlements model it allows us to aggregate content, push that into our products, like we mentioned before. Okay, a lot of our products are SaaS based and they work on APIs. Well, if we have an API based system, we're able to get content out to our products now and integrated with, with tools like Pendo and Welcome and other tools like that. We're able to get all the aggregation of tools into our support portals, right? So customers can, if they go to get, want to get support, they can get access to your documentation in the same way that we get, get access to a knowledge article. And similarly for a case management, representatives, they should actually also have con access to your content, not just as a PDF file. So the idea is getting this content out to where we need to see it in a much more efficient way. So if we talk about some of the the benefits of this, so it allows us to reduce support costs because frankly, people are able to find answers to questions much more easily because all the content's aggregated. It's not siloed anymore. It allows us to have much faster time to value. Your content is updated it's approved and then immediately gets out to all these touch points because everything's API based. It's not like I'm creating a chump file and uploading it to the next version of the product or, you know, or waiting for, you know, someone to go in IT to go ahead and upload, you know, my, my, uh, my web help to some kind of file system or, or, or website, right? We don't have to get the, the compliance to say, okay, is this content, you know, who is this available to and make sure it's going to go to the right place. So it, it creates a lot more time you know, much faster time to value for your content. It also allows you to increase your customer satisfaction, mostly because they're getting more updated content, and also because, frankly, they get um, they get all the answers or all the content to their fingertips when they do a search. They're able to find all that content, and when they and then they're able to stay in in one channel in order to see all that content as opposed to context switching all over the place. That's also a, a very very big um, advantage as well. And again, the the uh, the buzzword of the day is GPT. So it also allows you to become GPT um, ready, okay? Because you have all the content aggregated, okay? So I hope this makes sense. I tried to go through this pretty slowly, to kind of map out what a lot of us are, you know, using or having in place today, and really the pain that we're having around that as well, if inefficiencies, and then be able to propose um, a more modern way that that many companies are have rolled this out, and are are, are benefiting from that. Now, by the way, I, 
a lot of this may sound overwhelming, like, okay, what, how do I put that big yellow box in the middle? Like, you know, how do I actually get this thing to work? And that's something we'll be talking about later, but, but, uh, you know, here at, at Zoom in, in, you know, in a partnership with the Madcap uh, Flare people and, and, and people at Exisoft, we've, um, we've opened up an opportunity for you to actually, you know, send some content and we'll actually put your content in one of those content orchestration platforms. And you'll be able to see how that content comes to life in a unified platform in a GPT enabled experience. And you can actually, um, if you're going to the conference in the Mad World Conference uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be actually be able to show that to you and you can actually see your content inside of one of these uh, content orchestration platforms and seeing your content um, in, in that unified experience and seeing how you can how you can actually get access to that and see your content with GPT already enabled. So if you want, you can click on that, that button on the bottom left and you can register and we'll be happy to work with you on that. So now let's talk about GPT a little bit more deeply. In order to become GPT ready, there's really three main aspects. Number one is the content consolidation, like we've been talking about. So you really need a common layer for the AI to reach all the content in order for you to you know, build those vector databases and build those, L, those large language models, models that you've been hearing about, right? If your developers have to make you know, one-to-one -one, you know, or many-to-many -many connections between all those different content sources and worrying about them being updated, and, you know, then that's just a recipe for, for uh, just not getting off the ground. Um, or not having all the content available and, and, and participating. Um, the second thing is content governance. You know, many of many of you, like I mentioned earlier, don't you know kind of allow your content to be available to the public. There needs to be governance around governance. There needs to be a security. There needs to be privacy enforced. You need to be able to say, well, if I'm submitting content that's only for customers or only for internal employees, I want to make sure that if someone uses GPT or AI to get an answer, there's some kind of an application or a chatbot. I want to make sure they're not going to get content or an answer based on content they're not allowed to see. Uh, we want to make sure that there's PCI scrubbed out, any kind of personal information, obviously. So you need to have that content consolidation, and you need to have a content governance layer as well. The third aspect of that is to have that, that capability really enabled anywhere. You need to have that API-based framework to allow you to take that and make it portable to those touch points we talked about before, those channels, but also inside your applications, inside your products, um, and any, anywhere else that you want. So I've been hearing really kind of very interesting use cases these days about using AI in, in, in apps uh, in different domains, different products. And that's really cool. Um, but th those apps are only going to be, the, the, the more content, the more updated and uh, uh, content they have access to, the more successful they're going to be. Okay, so there's really three, I guess, pillars of, of GPT readiness that you really need to, to take into consideration, consideration in that content orchestration platform that modern platform really gives you that um, those three those the consolidation governance as well as that the API ability to uh, to be portable okay so we talked a lot about tools and I gave a little buzzwords about yeah you need to save money yeah you need to be able to create value yeah you need to be you know showing ROI but let's dive into that and uh, in a little bit more remember in the beginning we talked about the success is really not just in be able to say uh, yeah we're getting ROI in our content but how do you prove that how can I identify the KPIs that are important to your organization? How can you actually measure that? How can you articulate that to your organization over time? Okay, so let's talk about content value and, and what parameters or KPIs this content orchestration platform and the analytics that goes around it needs to be able to support. So a lot of you know uh, already that technical content is really critical across the entire journey of your, of your customers, right? From awareness about your products from a pre-sales point of view, learning, buying, and then all the way through usage um, and, then, and then renewing and moving ahead with your product. So these are some numbers. Um, I think this is from Forrester, if I'm not mistaken. 90% 90, 90 of, of B2B customers used your technical content before purchasing. Um, a large number of people say content frustration allows them to, to churn or would drive them to churn. And 70% uh, and, and or just a lot of, of traffic uh, is actually coming for your content. I mean, if you think about it, the content that you are creating in your organization, in your tech docs or learning organization, you are basically a huge percentage, up to 70% often in the web traffic for, for your company. That's huge. And clicks are, are money, right? And so when you're driving that much traffic, so eyeballs are on you, and that's really becomes an enabler 
for improving or increasing value. Now, if we take all these KPIs, which we're going to go through in the, shortly, we need to basically break these down into three pillars. Now, the three pillars, the way we look at it is efficiency and cost reduction, those type of KPIs. The second one is around self-service. Okay, how do we improve self-service capabilities? And third is how do we improve our revenue through, um, through the usage of content? Again, this all relates back to how do we build a modern architecture which will, will service and be able to allow us to measurably improve KPIs in this, in, this, in this fashion. And if you notice, these pillars really walk across the organization, right? It's not just tech docs efficiency and R&D efficiency. It's really, how do we make the organization more efficient? How do we make self-service for our customers more efficient, right? It's not just an R&D problem, it's a self-service problem. Um, how do we actually drive growth, drive revenue in our company? So if we talk about self-service KPIs first, okay, so that can be broken down to, to a number of these. Now, your company may not be you know, focused on all of these. In fact, you're probably not focused on, on all of these. You're probably focused on a few. There may be someone in marketing who is concerned about you know, traffic KPIs, pages per session, you know, bounce rates, returning users, things like that. Search KPIs, if the efficiency of search. Like are people are clicking through after they do a search. What does that click through mean? Are they clicking through and, and, and hoping to go to kind of drive towards a sale or an upgrade? Or is this click through, you know, we want to actually keep it pretty low because people are coming in, they have a problem, they get an answer really quickly, they click on it and then they read it and they're gone. Okay, so there's different aspects of that as well. Content KPIs, content satisfaction score, is the content we're creating, is that really, is that satisfactory? Is it is it driving towards towards good results, okay? How much how much content that we're creating is actually being engaged with? I mean, we have 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million pages of technical content, and we're, and we're constantly creating new versions of content, new, our products are constantly evolving and new products coming out, we're, we're translating, right? How much of the content is actually being engaged with? Okay, what should we be focusing on? And what's our SEO score when we're using Google and other other uh, search tools in order to get the content. Is that content is that content allowing us to get better self-service through better searchability and accessibility um, and performance? Okay, so these are KPIs that different people in your organization, whether it comes from marketing, but also from a self-service um, support point of view, these things are people are looking at to see um, how those scores are changing over time. And again, your content has a direct correlation to the improvement or the or you know, or maybe the opposite of you know, in some cases, to these KPIs. So we want to make sure that we're instituting tools and processes and and frameworks and architectures that will help to improve these these KPIs. From a specific support point of view, okay. So most of the content, or a large a large fraction of content that are, or I'm sorry, a large fraction of support cases that are coming into your support channels, right? Your support teams through emails or through calls or whatever have you. A lot of them are 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 driven back to how do I do something? How do I do an installation? How do we do a configuration? A lot of them are bugs and defects, right? And limitations and other types of things. But a lot of them are the basics, right? And much of that can be resolved by documentation. A lot of our customers are measuring this and they're seeing that, wow, if our content as our content becomes more and more accessible or available in, 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 a, in a unified documentation portal, in a unified support self-service portal inside of our community, inside of our products, well, that just drives support costs down because those cases are just not happening. It also allows your support team to really focus on the harder issues, like how do I actually do you know deep implementations or complex implementations or building the types of relationships we need, not dealing with annoying you know, simple, simple problem. So allowing your, your documentation to be more efficiently available um, will also directly improve your support KPIs. We got now to kind of turn to the efficiency and cost reduction. So we talked about self-service. Now let's talk about efficiency and cost reduction. And that really breaks down across the organizations in, in a lot of different ways. Number one, IT and cloud, being able to consolidate platforms, be able to reduce cloud costs, also, more and more, a lot of our businesses are being are going through mergers and acquisitions, and that's extremely disruptive. 
okay, how do we allow people to continue writing content and managing content in the way they know, let their R&D keep working the way they know, the product managers, technical documentation um, professionals, support people, let them keep working in the way they, they used to and making creating content, but we need to be able to get that content to all of our customers in a branded, efficient way, you know, much more quickly. So allowing to have this content orchestration platform allows us to really speed up M&A and reduce that disruption. And really just get a, a much more quicker ROI on those acquisitions themselves. Okay, efficiency and support we talked about earlier, re cases being resolved, cases being deflected, um, teams being able to increase their efficiency of, of publishing, reducing QA time in products because that, that content is being single sourced again through uh, into the products. Being able to reduce implementation time for our customers and just overall, um, again, from a support point of view, allow them to reduce the average handling time for support or other types of service cases. Okay, so efficiency and cost reduction goes across many different aspects of the organization, IT, support, and other types of teams. And again, your content, you should be really proud of yourselves because your content really is a direct lever to, all, to almost all of these KPIs. Again, and that really goes back to how an orchestration platform can really be a driver for this. Now, we talked a little bit earlier on a content ecosystem slide that it's not just us technical writers and us, you know, support, uh, training people, creating content anymore. Very often there's a lot of different players who are creating content, technical content, that's gonna be going into uh, to a, a product um, delivery, right? Whether it be a new product or, or a, a, an upgraded product. So, you know, the amount of organizations that have only tech writers creating content is really very little these days, about 17% according to, to a tech comm survey. Development people are more and more are, are, are contributing content. Again, they're not usually using Flare, they're not using Dita. They're often using Markdown, they're using Swagger and Docs Code, they're using you know, restructured text and all this other stuff. So you know, more and more of, the, of, of these businesses have development resources or, or are submitting content, okay? Product management more and more are being tasked with creating content. That content needs to be getting got out, you know, get out to our customers. They may be edited and, and reworked a little bit, but that content needs to be get out. Service and support people, again, a large percent, about a quarter. QA people, sales marketing. These are you know, people who are contributing to technical content, okay, and also contributing to either content and products getting out on time or contributing to products going out late. Okay, so this becomes more, the, having this, these types of modern content orchestration platforms in place becomes again more and more critical for the overall success of, uh, of the rollout of our products. I, I'm sure a lot of you um, are like squirming in your seat. Remember the good old days when, when you know, the, uh, the product was out and like the, 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 the final wrapping and the bow was put on the product and that, uh, you know, some, some time between uh, closing time and, you know, dawn in the middle of the night. And then of course the, the last minute tech doc changes need to be made and then rolled out. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's not R and D that we're waiting for the product. We're waiting for the technical documentation. So those days hopefully are over. Like when the content being updated and gone out, this content should be flowing to our product and we shouldn't need to have to wait for our content anymore in order to hold up that are holding up any kind of product releases. The last pillar that we talked earlier about is revenue and growth KPIs. That's how we generate more business and we reduce um, reduce the uh, the churn of business. So creating more awareness. A lot of the content you're creating is gold. It's SEO rich content. If that content, the, the content that's able to be public facing needs to be SEO rich and that needs to be out there. Like if you're still creating content and posting in a PDF, like your content is just wasted opportunity. There's so much SEO rich content that should be driving leads and driving awareness about your products just by using the content, have that content available on, on a modern modern portal, on a modern web interface, being available through APIs into your, your e-commerce sites. Okay, we have a lot of customers who are doing that now. We publish content through the orchestration layer. That content is able to be pulled directly into an e-commerce site dynamically. So creating more awareness for your products, more and more critical. We're hearing more and more digital and marketing people. We're getting much more involved in in the uh, in the rollout and the funding of technical documentation or technical technical content tooling because they just understand the vast value of that. Okay. Um, buying, being able to uh, get new tra traffic, 
um, new business from the traffic, um, returning users, engagement again from a, from a marketing point of view, getting people to come like, like clicking and, and engaging with technical content just will drive more business um, because you're just creating stickiness and people are just learning about the products that you have. A lot of them are great products, right? They're also allowing you to grow by by reducing that product onboarding time, They're allowing you to create better performance scores. Again, that drive up that self-service rates because people can get all that content, whether it be a video or a procedure or even a, a, a content, a, a knowledge article directly into their products, right? Through that API based and product help. Okay. And then retention, again, retention is very important. Like it's very expensive to get new customers as you all know, and be able to um, improve or increase that NPS net promoter score, um, increase customer satisfaction, see that. And again, just really, really reduce that churn. Okay. I'm sure you've heard uh, in your business, I know in our business and a lot of businesses we talk to, you know, increasing, you know, increasing leads and then just reducing the churn is just more and more critical. Now, here we see uh, a little bit of proof for kind of numbers around what we were talking about earlier from Gartner about how B2B um, buyers, specifically B2B software buyers, spending their time when they're start deciding to purchase something. And I think this gets borne out. I mean, we work for B2B businesses, and when we're, ma we're making purchases, we're also doing a lot of research on technical content. Con content. We, we ourselves in our business, we, we have a lot of respect. You know, we ourselves, I mean, all of us in this call, we have a great respect for technical content. We expect that technical content to be available to us. So uh, we're not going to make, we're not going to buy anything unless we have good content. And so your documentation, technical content, just again a powerful tool for attracting and converting new customers. Okay. From a retention point of view, again numbers from uh, from uh, from different data sources saying that customers. Uh, have job services because they couldn't figure out how to use it. I'm, I'm sure you've heard that in your in your businesses as well. There's very few businesses these days that are really truly sticky. There's still some out there, but you know, when someone leaves that business, they're not going to go and buy you when they go to get another job. You know, when they when there's when they when they change positions. So you want to make sure that you're keeping customers happy and they're not they're not dropping your product um, because of bad bad content experiences. And as more of our more of our uh, more and more of our products are SaaS, then that becomes more and more critical. The time to resolve a customer question really directly impacts the customer satisfaction and renewal. Okay, here's another another uh, uh, graphic from the TSIA, which is a support uh, support organization um, association. Uh, so you see here, there's a, a high correlation between having um, you know between low incident resolution time and, and higher um, and higher sa sa customer satisfaction. Okay. Again, this purely goes to not just the quality of your content, but also to the ability to get access to that content quickly. Okay. Quick case study is a company called Imperva. The re reason why I picked this is because uh, a lot of these sites there are, well, the site on top is, is publicly facing. This co company that's been using Flare for many, many years, Company that's been growing by acquisition, company with a lot of um, of legacy products, but also a lot of SaaS products. Pretty much all the products these days are, are SaaS, either cybersecurity. A company where a lot of the content is public, but a lot of the comp content is is locked down, it's customer facing. So, so a company where where they have a lot of the complexities um, that we spoke about earlier. Now, in, in in the early days, they were you know just using Flare, and then they bought another company, and they were using you know Word or some other tool, and, and needed a way to to get all this content into one unified portal. So they launched a, a, a unified portal, um, docs.imperva.com, you can go and see that there, okay? And then they they saw that, you know, more and more content were coming from other stakeholders to support stakeholders, as we mentioned before, a lot more API documentation, so Swagger had to be implemented, um, Confluence, Google Docs. They also saw that they were creating more and more KB articles. They wanted to make sure that that the, the support articles, that the support people were were writing because they actually identified problems that needed to, that that had answers, right? They wanted that content to be available also in the documentation portal, again to increase the improve the self service. Um, then they started using data and PDF as well. So now what's interesting here is that this the, the marketing people actually understood that a better access to the content uh, would drive would drive sales, and they actually funded this documentation portal, and um, they're actually getting leads, um, you know, over a thousand. Uh, qualified um, MQLs leads, um, qualified leads annually, just from the documentation portal. Um, at some point, their CIO was uh, decided to implement Salesforce as their support portal, 
and I did a migration to Lightning. A lot of you are maybe are using um, Salesforce um, Experience Cloud or or ServiceNow, where you know the support experience moves to the CRM. Again, either ServiceNow or Salesforce in a lot of cases, sometimes Zendesk. The idea here is that it's perfect that we want all this content, like the same documentation content. I want that inside my support portal also. I want it there. I want it searchable. I want a table of contents. I want to see API documentation, everything with a complete experience inside of my Salesforce related experience. And that's really what they were able to implement also with this content orchestration platform, as well as a uh, Salesforce app that was provided uh, by Zoomin. And, and then they came and said, you know what? We want all this content also available right inside the application. So they went ahead and, uh, and used this API based system to get this content um, directly inside of the application, it's almost like a mini portal with very specific, obviously product related content for that product inside that application. And so now the content, you know, is updated in, in Madcap Flare, it's pushed to a destination, you know, one click publishing, like we're all, you know, demand these days. The content goes up and immediately it's being um, reflected, that update is reflected in the docs portal, support portal, as well as the help because we're not actually pushing content there anymore. We're pushing that to an API layer, that orchestration platform. And that therefore we're only pushing to one place and that orchestration platform is the API based layer to make sure that content is, is available inside the docs portal, support portal and app help or wherever else you need to get that content. And now actually the GPT language models as well. So if we wrap things up, I'd like to, to, uh, uh, to suggest that the key takeaways are number one, your organization needs to be able to demonstrate measurable efficiency and measurable value. Okay. It's, it's not just enough to say, yeah, we need docs anymore. No one, people don't, people don't really, uh, that doesn't give much credence anymore. You must demonstrate measurable value. You need to be able to have, um, understand that your content is really an enabler for your entire business. Okay. To improve your KPIs and really facilitate that growth, being able to not just to, to know that, but actually be able to articulate that with numbers becomes important. And I think we went through that today. Content silos are just inefficient for customers. We talked about, remember the ecosystem slide in the beginning. So all those, those silos on the right side and having content silos, you know, out in space is very inefficient for customers. It drives down customer satisfaction. It drives up churn, but it's also not efficient for your technical people. And you know this, I don't have to tell you that. Even federations, federated search, like I can just tack a federated search on there and just still keep shoving people from place to place. It's not really a solution. You need to have that aggregated experience of all that content anywhere where the customer is going, whether in your product or in the support channel or wherever. Content, or, content orchestration, that is the modern omnipresent, omni, you know, channel that you need these days to make sure all your multiple sources are being supported across all those, those channels. Okay, and be personalized across the journeys that your customers are going through. And then again, analytics are key. You need to be measuring, you need to be identifying gaps, you need to be constantly improving. Okay, it needs to be like, am I really spending, am I, if I'm doing translations, am I really translating the right content? Are people, what content are people really looking at? What content are people really not looking at? Where should I be spending my resources? Okay, where what's the higher quality, quality content? Where should it be content that's create, being created in, in R&D? How much of that content needs to really be edited and how much of it can go through as it is? All these different questions, you just need the numbers at your fingertips in order to be able to run your own tech, technical communication and, to, and training organizations. You just need it these days, okay? Um, but you also, your customers, your companies also need it and you also need to be able to articulate um, this value. What we've been doing a lot with a lot of our customers is we actually um, help them to, to use analytics to identify this KPIs that are important for that business. Okay, and again, not all those KPIs are important, but focus on the KPIs that are important. Be able to visually um, articulate in a one pager to management all of the various KPIs that are important, whether it be you know imp improving NPS, whether it being reducing um, average handle time, whether it means increasing um, MQLs or, or leads by a certain number. So being able to measure, measure over time, focus, articulate and be able to again publish that internally to to just show the, the the value of your organization and what you're being able to provide again a lot of this sounds very uh it might sound overwhelming you might say wow this is like just we're not there yet right the good thing is is that you know it's it's um it's eminently accessible okay like i mentioned earlier we're we're very happy and again in partnership with the madcap folks um we're we're running this um it's ability for you to actually just send us some content 
and any content you want, as much as you want. Lashly is uploaded to one of these content orchestration platforms. We'll give you a branded experience with your logo and, and some basic branding. So you can actually see how your content looks in a, uh, in a personalized experience um, inside of a portal or inside of a support channel or, or, and also being used by, by GPT. And you can just see how it works and uh, get an idea. And then you know, we'll, we'll be able to show that to you at the conference. If you're going to Matter World, hopefully we'll see you there. We can actually come and we'll show you that to you at the conference, at the, conf at the conference and you can actually take that home and be able to, to um, get a link to that and show that your colleagues when, when you go home. So I'd like to thank you very, very much for your attention. And I know I spoke a little bit quicker than uh, Mike did, but hopefully this was, uh, was useful. So I'd like to open up for questions. All right, thank you, Joe. And I will use Joe now instead of Mr. Gelb. Uh, thank you, <laughs> um, I feel much more comfortable. Very, very good. So the first uh, was really more of a comment, a bit of feedback. At the 14 mark, the comment was, this was on the slide you showed where it was showing kind of the, the real world difficulties right now with all of the different channels mm -hmm. of content and delivery. And the comment was, this represents fairly well the environment we are dealing with. So there was just a, mm -hmm. a kind of affirmation. Then at mm -hmm. the 33 minute mark, there was a question that came in on the slide you showed kind of where content sources from the biggest mm -hmm. line item was labeled development. And they were simply asking if you go a little deeper, what is meant by development versus sales or, uh, you know, marketing communications or some of the other categories. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That's a great question. So, so, more and more, the actual developers are being tasked with creating content. Okay, uh, either because they're being, you know, because they're creating content anyway, and we want to be able to reuse that content, or because, frankly, we just don't have enough technical documentation resources anymore to be able to service all the products that we have. So, more and more development R and D engineers are being asked to to create content now. More and more, I think a lot of you in the, in the audience know about this as well, is that more and more uh, we these products, especially SaaS software products, are using what's called docs as code, where comments and you know content is basically being embedded inside the actual source code. That content is being extracted in in file formats like called JSON or Swagger, or Open API, Docs, and other types of formats. And that content is now being is being used more Markdown. That content is being used more and more to you know going straight to customer facing interfaces, whether it be a development portal, but really to our, to our doc site as well. We're saying more and more is that we don't want to have a separate developer portal. We don't want to have a separate docs portal. We want our documentation where we discuss and we, we explain how our products and our APIs work. We want to have that hand in hand and um, fully coordinated, uh, integrated with the, um, with the, your documentation as well as the API doc documentation that's created by, by those developers. So I hope that helps to answer the question. Excellent. So then the third question that came in was a little bit more specific. Since Madcap Software is hosting the webinar, could you speak more to the integration of Madcap specific content into such a workflow, an omni source content workflow? Sure. So we, at Zoom, and we frankly, we have many, uh, probably a third of our customers are using Flare products. Okay. Uh, Madcap Flare, um, probably a little more than 30% at this point. So we have a lot of customers that are using Flare. And typically what happens is um, we do is provide a way that you can can uh, basically create a destination inside of your Flare. So you create a target and hit a destination. And that when you click on that destination, it just doesn't just go to, to an HTML. It doesn't just go to a PDF. It actually takes that content and pushes it to the orchestration platform. So from an authoring point of view, on a publishing point of view, you're really just cl clicking on that one click. But instead of creating a, a one HTML bundle that you need to upload somewhere, it's actually just you know, that one click is actually pushing that content to the orchestration platform. That's one way. Other Another way is integration right with Madcap Central, where the content as the content is being, um, or with something like like uh, like Git or other repositories where the content is being checked in and then you're creating actions or events where that content is being automatically pushed either to the orchestration sandbox so you can see what the content looks like in, in a sandbox environment or to the production environment depending on the um, whether that content's gone through full approvals and then that content will go directly um, and really automatically from flare 
and your repository directly out to that content orchestration platform. So Thank you. actually, while we're talking about this, one thing I wanted to um, to, to hone in also, we're, we're, a lot of us are, are used to is taking like one target in the Flare, you know, construct, one target, and it creates like one set of HTML or one PDF, let's say one set of HTML. And then we put that somewhere and that has its own search ability, its own table of contents, right? But when we're talking about a, an orchestration platform, right, we're talking about applying metadata that's kind of, that needs to be kind of um, unified across all the different content, which is something that we would we work with you on and how to do that actually inside Flare of, of managing uh, metadata and applying that metadata inside Flare. But also you need to be able to take that content and have it sitting in a in a platform with a lot of other targets, a lot of other content, okay? So each content needs to, we need to know that each content has its own cable table of contents, its own internal structures, but it needs to have a search across the entire repository as well as being able to have a search inside that that one target as well. So those are things that that uh, that need to be uh, supported inside the content orchestration layer. These are definitely things that are supported in the in the Zoom in platform as well that we're supporting our customers with. Excellent. Um, this one's a little more broad. It's not to a specific slide, but more of an overview question sure. for you. The question is: Does Zoom in provide the omni-channel endpoint solution? or only the orchestration layer, and then we must develop in-house or contract a third party for the endpoint. So is it pure orchestration, orchestration and endpoint, or both slash either? Right, so it's really both slash either. So Zoomin does out of the box provide a, what's called like a white labeled hosted portal where you can publish all this content. Everything on the left side can be Made accessible in a in a portal that's hosted by Zoomin, but but branded and administered by your your team, with your domain level. So it's, it, we do provide that white labeled channel from a, that what we call document a, a technical resource center where the content can be available. We also provide a a Salesforce app. So in the Salesforce app exchange, you can download the the sales the Zoomin app for Salesforce, and that will allow you that app provides Lightning components, which actually integrate with that, that, that orchestration layer to pull the content out via API. And every time someone clicks, they actually get the, the latest rendition of that content. We also have a, a, a app for ServiceNow. For many of, your, many of you might be using ServiceNow for your uh, ITSM or your support. We also have an app that works similarly in ServiceNow. We also have a, 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 um, an in-product help framework. So you can actually plug this, like a widget, into your actual applications, right? So those are the four main, uh, more four main um, touch points, and then we have customers also using the orchestration layer as a as a headless uh, contract, where they're they're building their own their own portals, or they're using existing portals, getting their their existing AEM based or e-commerce portals to get content out. Um, or also, and, and many more more and more of our customers these days, um, really literally the, over the past few months, are using now that that headless infrastructure to build and train and maintain language models for GPT. Excellent. Um, okay, uh, another question. Now this one's a little bit longer, so I think I'm going to try and summarize a bit at the end for you, but that will be my words, not okay. the uh, original questioner. But it starts okay. off, I am fairly new to the tech writing field. In regard mm -hmm. to the current piece we are discussing, I was recently tasked with creating a document with information from developers and the developers had inserted directly from the code instead of formatting it for the document and readability. I then had to spend right. two extra hours to redo the work. It made me nervous at first that the developers could do our job. And then now I am realizing that is not the case. So to summarize, I believe they're just speaking to that age old challenge of going from unstructured to, you know, high gloss structured, ready for customer consumption. Right, right, yeah. Listen, the, uh, the you know, the, the worst nightmare is that after you did that two hours of work, like you're about to go home, you're all set, you got the keys in the hand, and then all of a sudden the developer says, oh, we had a little bit of change. Here's the latest version of the code. Can you please take this unformatted code and can you just put that into your document, right? And then, you know, 
two hours later and a lot of grumbling, you're out the door. So these days, it does, we, the orchestration platform allows you to do is, is ingest that content. Usually it's in the form of Markdown or JSON or different types of text formats. You ingest that in the source format into the, in, into the or orchestration platform. You don't have to do anything. The source comes in <clears throat> and then orchestration platform along with those, those, um, those, uh, the, uh, the visualization that we talked about before, the, tech, the, the portal or the, or the Salesforce app, is able to render those formats properly on the screen. Okay, now what it also allows you to do is actually link, put a, like a reference to the, of that content into your Flare target. So you can say, I have all my different topics and I have like my table of contents, right? And then here, I wanna make a reference, I wanna have th that code block or that system of code. I can actually make a, a link to that so that when that your Flare target gets published to the Kraken orchestration platform, people will see a table of contents, for example, that's all of this content that you created, like how do you do different implementations and things like that. And then when you click on the next thing, you'll actually see that that code blocks or the code information actually rendered properly on the screen alongside your content. So it just makes the your your flow much more modern. It takes away that two hour um, or actually four hour of work and just makes everything much more, um, it makes everything flow much better. And it's all searchable and usable by GPT and everything else. All right, that is the end of the questions that were submitted. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank you, Joe. Excellent presentation. Uh, for those thank attending, you. again, you will be receiving an email when the video has been posted. And if this content was interesting and you would like to see more content along these lines, as Joe mentioned a few times, we do have Mad World coming up in a few weeks. I believe there are still tickets available. If you want to hop up to our website, that would be a, a great opportunity. But let me hand it back over to Joe to see what he has for any closing remarks for us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for hosting us and really, uh, really happy to, uh, to, to be a guest on your channel. Um, again, thank you for your participation. We're really looking forward to seeing you at the Mad World Conference. And again, if you'd like to see this, your content actually in, in seeing this and with GPT and and just seeing how this works, feel free to click on on the on the on the uh, the link there, and we'll be happy to be in touch with you and just show show it to you in the conference in about another week, week and a half. But thanks very much. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of today and an even better week. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye.